Hi everyone. Once again, welcome to my channel, Riker Rides. I really appreciate you being here. If you are new to the channel, my name is Beth and I am from, I am Riker Rides, I guess. And I appreciate you guys checking in. It's not too late to subscribe. For those who have already subscribed, thank you so much. All 10,000 plus of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let's get started. So today I am doing a review of the Cetus, oops, the Cetus guy with against the Riker. And I hate to even say the word compare or, or versus when you compare, when you're talking about the two, because they really, there is nothing you could compare the two, except the fact there's two wheels up front on both of them. All of them that, and they're both from Can-Am. All of them that, there's really, they're, they're, they're not even in the same league. So the Sea to Sky, as you know, um, I've had for the past week, Can-Am was, was gracious enough to loan this to me. And um, I put on, I used it well, I, I put on almost 2,400 miles and about 54 hours of time in the seats. And so I really feel like I have done very well getting to know this bike on the inside and outside to give a very honest review of it and my experience on the Sea to Sky versus my experience riding the Riker all these years. So um, with no further ado, I'm just gonna talk about, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of the stats and all the nitty gritty details of the bike. That has been done a thousand times I'm making into a couple of reviews, stats here and there, maybe, but very little. Um, my assessment today is going to be me as a five foot three female, how it fits me personally and my experience on it. I've literally taken this from the sea in Florida, Great Smoky Mountains. So I've had it literally from sea to sky, and I can give a, a fair review. So here it goes. My favorite part of this bike has been, um, it's a lot of, I've had a lot of really good pluses on this bike. So one is, let's talk about the seat. The seat is very, very, very plush. It, you are like, I, I can't even explain to you. It is the most plush seat that they have. Um, this is the seat of sky. So everything is marked seat of sky, has all the nice badging on it. Um, it's not my bike, so I didn't put anything fancy on it, but you can put a backrest on it. The back seat here has, um, it, it is, it's like lumbar support. It, it is just beautiful, beautiful, comfortable, comfortable seat. I had a back, um, I had someone on the back seat for part of the trip. I could not even tell that they were on the seat. I could not even tell they were on the bike. The only thing that I noticed differently is it takes a little more stopping time, but as far as comfort, I had no idea they were on it. And they had no idea that, you know, we didn't, weren't touching, there's plenty of room. For me, riding this the whole way, this was a negative for me. I'll talk about this in a second. So as far as the seat is concerned, it is a big saddle compared to the Riker. So yes, it's more plush, but it's also much bigger. So when I'm riding it, I kind of feel like I'm riding a horse. I, I don't mean that in a funny way, but you're, you're riding it like, you have that stance of that wide stance like a horse compared to the Riker seat, which is much smaller. The seat of sky is not very adaptable the way it is, whereas the Riker just uh, it has the U-fit system where you can just pop it open, you can move the handlebars, you can move the brake lever, you can move everything. This does not have that ability. So as I'm sitting on the bike, it is a very wide stretch for me. I don't know if I have unusually small arms, but it is a wide stretch for me to the point where it's uncomfortable. And my foot barely touches the brake. And so there are aftermarket accessories you can put on the bike. Um, there is a brake extender. It's not purchased, it's not by Can-Am, but if you notice here, for me to go on the brake, it, it's, it's a little far for me if I want to be up here. So. You can buy risers to push the handlebars forward and you can buy a brake extender to make it more comfortable for you. So what I did was, again, it's not my bike, so I just wanted a temporary solution. I bought this on Amazon. I'll offer the link on there for you. It fits perfectly in here. It looks like it's almost made for the bike. And it pushed me up exactly where I needed to ride. I hit the brake pedal perfectly. I can hit the handlebars perfectly. 
and it was it made for a very very enjoyable ride so that was that worked out just great what i loved about it is the dashboard uh on the dash it's not i can light it up um the dashboard has it's all electronic it's very beautiful it has the white for the daytime and then at nighttime it goes dark and the beauty of it is it gives you um one of the options is it you can say you can reset it and it tells you how many hours you've spent on the bike so i reset it for my trip so i knew exactly i spent 54 hours in this seat um, and it tells you so it's not just mileage but you can do hours too which i thought was really really cool and there's also a built-in stereo system which doesn't sound so bad it's actually not a bad you can definitely hear it at high speeds and you can definitely um, hear it with your um, helmet on, no problem at all. It has a built-in FM radio, and you can Bluetooth it to your phone for your own music that you have, Pandora, or whatever you listen to. The BRP app to make all this work, and the controls to make this work, I thought were a little complicated, um, a little complicated to, to deal with. Um, I almost felt like I needed a whole manual just on how to work the radio and how to work the controls for that BRP system. But after a week on it, I figured it out and it worked. It was just fine, but it, sometimes it would randomly shut off. It, it was just kind of, it was a little complicated to deal with. Also, the windshield is awesome. So the windshield, I didn't think I would use it too much, but the windshield, you can have it go um, up and down. So I can, let me start up. back down automatically so I think that's cool you would you know you think that you don't use it um, I know the the windshield you can get for the Riker you can manually make up go up and down but it's amazing how quickly um, how much you actually use the windshield making go up and down for if it's raining if it's different conditions it's it's, it's very very nice to have another great feature that I loved on this because I was in North Carolina another great feature is the heated grips and heated seats. And also the grips back here heat up for the passenger as well as the seat and they have their own controls as well. Actually the heat, this is for their own radio system so they can control their speakers back here. And then on this section is to control the heat, the heated seat and the heated bars just for the passenger separate from the, the uh, rider, the driver. And I use that a lot. Um, it, it heats up so much, even with my gloves on, um, it got too hot and I had to turn it off. So this high and low, it, it is plush. This is clearly a touring bike. Um, there's no question about it. If you are going on a long trip, this so the Sea to Sky is basically a very nice looking RT, but it's, everything inside is the same as an RT. It is extremely comfortable. Things that it took me a little while to get used to is how high up you are. Um, I'm used to being so low in the Riker and then on well, this being so high up i'm actually if you go like a basic sedan i'm actually looking down on the driver that's how how high up you are so it has a very different feeling another goal and everything's a great feature another really nice aspect for me was on the highway i felt completely in control this weighs a lot more than the riker and you can tell you can tell how heavy this bike is. On the highway, when your truck passes you by or a big windstorm, you do not move, you don't feel anything. It is stable, stable, stable. It is so stable, you could, it's just so comfortable, you're almost asleep while you're riding it. That's not something I recommend. But that's how great it is. It also, of course, has reverse and all the other nice features. Oh, the storage. You cannot, again, there's no comparison with the storage. Uh, as I, sh uh, I think I, I have a quick video on that I'll put right now of how nice the storage is. The storage. Now, as you know, the Riker has a little tiny trunk space up front. Sorry for the mess. Don't look. Don't look over there. Um, so it has a little tiny um, trunk, and that's really about it. You know, it doesn't hold all too much, and uh, that's it. So. 
On my Riker, I've got, I added some saddlebags and a top case. And that's great for one night or two nights. But if you're going for 10 nights like me, you need, you need this, you need, you need to have this. So let me show you all the stores that it has. So it has the typical, um, has the, the back stores, the two side cases, um, one, two, and also the front, um, one here, like a typical spider that comes with the trunk, the add on in the back. But specifically for the sea of the sky, I just think this is the coolest thing. It comes with custom fit can am suitcases in there so it has the it's has the can am name on there it just it's made to fit perfectly the only other people that i know that does this are like really fancy supercars they do that with um because they have limited trunk space so i thought it was so cool so for my trip i have this and it is a regular uh suitcase how cool is that and then on the side this is so awesome and then on the side it has also marked, it says Sea to Sky, and these pop right out. Sorry to do it one handed, but hops right out. You've got the Can-Am logo on there, and it has um, straps on the inside of it. That's really cool looking. And I'm gonna show you, and there's one on both sides. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. Oh, I love the yellow in there too. I like how it's all branded for the BRP. Comes with a shoulder strap, throw it on. Has really cool um, storage in there. And it is cool. And the other one on the other side, it has it as well. How cool is that? A whole nother bag in here. Um, so it is just, what better way to travel? And then on top of that, You've got your um, you've got your trunk still totally open and ready to go, and I am getting ready to pack. Let's see how it looks like when all the stuff is packed. That's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited. Right, this is what it looks like when they're all open and empty, ready to go. If you notice, the the shape of these um, are different because they're meant to um, fit specifically on each side panel. Frisbee's all kind of photobombing me. Frisbee, get out of the shop, baby. She's like, what? I don't know. So let's see how it looks when it is. Come here, Frisbee. All right, let's see how it looks when it's all done. Not bad. You can't compare. <laughs> Um, the gas miles um, that you get on this. The miles per gallon are roughly the same as the Riker to the RT, but on the RT or Sea to Sky, um, the gas tank is so big. You get 239 miles on one fill up. 239. You're going to stop because you're tired before you run out of gas. Whereas on the Riker, you're stopping a lot to get gas. So on a situation like I was on, running in the mountains, in the Great Smoky Mountains, and the Taylor Dragon, and all that area, you, uh, I wouldn't have been able to make it. I would have run out of, run out of gas between point A to point B. You're constantly thinking about how you're going to fill up next. So if you're wanting to ride, you know, a good two and a half hours without worrying about filling up, this is the bike for you. Um, again, it's it's a comfort situation more than anything else. My. Um, my analysis of the two bikes, you should get both. <laughs> if you can afford it, you get both. I love my Riker. Um, it's, this is my baby. This is my, my blood, sweat, and tears. And I, I love, it's just so cute and little. The Riker's like a little, it's like a little mascot to the, um, to the RT. And it, it just fits me. This is a glove to me. This fits like a glove. The Cedar Sky, the RT, is if I was making a wild comparison, that would be like driving a fancy plush, say Lexus. And this is like driving like a, a rough kind of sports car. You're missing all the comfort of that bike, but you've got the fun and the sport of this bike. So, I mean, people ask me all the time, what should I get? My answer is, what are you gonna do with the bike? If you're planning on touring, and going cross country on the bike or going on really long weekend excursions, 
the RT or the F3 is your, the Spider is your bike. Another question I get is about a passenger. Yes, you can take this off and put a seat on. I have a video on that as well. And it's just not, in my opinion, it's not as comfortable. It's definitely not as comfortable as having a passenger on the, um, on the RT. If you're having a passenger on this, zipping around town, no big deal. Again, long trips, um, you're traveling a lot with a passenger, get the tour and get the bigger bike. If you're looking to zip around, have a great time, this is your this is your baby right here. I've also noticed the Riker community is a tight, tight community. Maybe it's because it we're new and we've only been around for a couple of years, but when there's another Riker owner, and we're waving, we're pulling over, we're stopping at coffee, we're family all of a sudden. And we're just, we love to talk to each other. Whereas spider people, um, you know, they're, I don't know, I just don't get the same vibe. I guess they don't do a lot of their modifications, maybe are putting on a sway bar, things like that, but they're not changing the bike on the outside as much as Riker people do. So there's a little, little bit more camaraderie around, right? I don't know. That's just my opinion. I don't want to get any hate mail over that. But I feel like the Riker, Riker life is, is real. It's like a real thing. It's, it's palpable, the, the excitement you have with the Riker. So any questions or comments, leave your feedback down below. Um, if you've written both and you have your opinions or if you like one versus the other. Again, it's super hard to make that kind of comparison because they're so different. Um, I love, love, love my Riker. It's not going anywhere. Um, if someone gave me um, an F3, I, I would gladly take it. Um, it. I think it'd be nice to have both for long trips and you know, then they're zipping around town. But thank you so much for watching. Um, stay tuned, coming up soon, within a week or two, I'm gonna show you how the RT, the Sea to Sky did on the Tail of the Dragon. So that's coming up soon. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, like, share, all that other YouTube junk that makes me um, kind of continue. And have a great afternoon, and I'll see you next time. Bye.